Hey guys, this is John, and I'm back playing DAG 87001. Played this guy a couple days ago in the 15 minute pool as well. So we have ourselves a rematch. Um, let's see what he chooses this time. All right, so we've got a ready system. I think d4 is the most challenging move in this position, but um, I almost always play c6 here just for simplicity's sake. d4 stakes out the most territory though. That's a pretty good move. I'll play my bishop to f5. The point is I wanna play e6, but I don't want the bishop on c8 to be locked inside the pawn chain. And because there's not a whole lot of pressure on my center yet, I have the ability to get it outside the chain, so I take it. Um, I'm gonna play h6 now. This move, you know, normally you shouldn't be making pawn moves like that this early in the game, but because he's chosen a very slow setup, I feel okay about doing that. This is a position I've had before. I'm gonna choose a, a kind of a weird, but playable line to go c5. And if you notice, I've delayed the development of my queenside knight. And the reason why is I still harbor hopes of putting the knight on c6, like the automatic move either on this previous move here with nine, move nine, c5, um, I could have played nine, knight, bd7, uh, or knight, bd7 earlier, like even before castling. But um, this is an interesting system I've, I've played a couple times, and I picked it up from uh, Grandmaster Alexei Dreyev. I saw him using this as black. And it looks a little weird, but it's, it's interesting. So we'll see what he thinks about that. Yeah, I've had this position at least twice OTB that I can recall. Knight e5 is a, a move that makes sense. Trying to liberate his bishop and uh, preempt me from moving my knight out. What will I do if knight e5? If knight e5, I might even play knight bd7 then. Kind of depends. Although then he could play knight df3. So knight e5 does make a lot of sense. I could also just play queen c7 perhaps and then play knight c6. If knight e5, I wouldn't be thrilled about playing knight c6 directly because uh, he could take and then double my pawns. Don't know what that's like. So he's thinking a little bit at this juncture. I think I had an opponent play rook c1 in this position before. But that doesn't hinder black's plans. I could just play knight c6 as usual. Hmm. Yeah, I think ninety five is the most testing. And since he's taking a while, I can think about what I'm going to do against that. It's going to be between knight bd seven and queen c seven. Is what I'm thinking. I'll probably play knight bd7 if he goes knight e5. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. If some neutral move, though, like queen c2 or rook c1, I think I'm happy to play knight c6. Although, if rook c1 and knight c6, I wonder if he could take on d5. With the idea being that if I take back with my pawn, he could play bishop takes f6 then. And if I were to take with a bishop, then c5 would be hanging. I know that's an idea I've ran into in this line before. Hmm. Yeah, if rook c1, I might have to come up with something different. Plays e4, really. It's an aggressive move. Okay, I'm just gonna take. Now, if he takes with the pawn, I'll have to decide whether it's worth it for me to capture with the knight. Wow, now knight e5. So his point is that if I take on d3, he can play bishop takes b7 and my rook will become trapped. But um, yeah, I mean, I can just develop here. I don't have to necessarily take him on d3. So I think I'm just going to play a quick developing move, knight bd7. Don't really want to go to c6 anymore because he could take and I'd have double isolated c pawns. 
So d7 should be fine. He takes, yep. Which way to take now? Hmm. I sort of feel that taking with the knight would be most accurate. But I'm not positive. If I take with the queen, they take with the pawn, gaining a tempo on my bishop, and then maybe they can go e5 on the next move. That's what that what that's what makes me hesitate to do that. Yeah, let's stick with the knight. Now he could legitimately take back with any of the three, either the two pieces or the pawn on e4. I think all of them have certain merit. Probably bishop takes e4 would be the safest move. Don't know that I like pawn takes that much for him. Now where to put the bishop? g6 or h7? I'll go h7. Although h7, he might pop his queen out to uh, g4, but that's a risk I might have to take. Yeah, let's go h7. If g6, I was just worried that f4, and he might be threatening f5 with tempo on my bishop on g6. So I'd rather play it like this and try to develop some pressure down the d file. Like now I'll play a rook to d8. I think he'll play pawn e5 very soon, if not on the next move. I'll have to decide which rook to put on uh, d8. Kind of leaning towards the a rook. Although using the f rook to go to d8 would free up the f8 square for like my knight to go to, for instance. This knight is now not a very good piece. I want to reposition this. Hopefully somewhere like d4 in the future. Okay, queen f3. He's leaving his knight undefended by doing that. But I don't see a way I can take advantage of that per se. I'll go rook d8. And my plan is that if he goes e5, I will play knight to b8 and attack his knight on d2 with tempo. In fact, I might play knight b8 on the next move against a lot of things. So it just looks like a, a good reorganizational move. I can also think about playing pawn e5. I could have thought about that on the last move. I maybe should have spent a little time thinking. But uh, this move looks solid and good. And I like that I'm keeping the pressure on the clock against him. Yeah, and e5 would have been slightly committal. I don't know that I, I necessarily want to play that move yet, so. Okay, so again, I think if he gets a chance, he's going to play pawn to e5. So I can either play my knight b8 idea and try to put the knight on c6, or I can try to play pawn e5 myself. Kind of torn, not sure which way is better. I like knight c6, or knight b8 to c6, I mean. But can he play queen g4 if I do that? Forgot about queen g4. Knight b8, queen g4, problem. Problem on g7. Hmm. Knight b8, queen g4, bishop g6, he has f5. Then I could take, take, and maybe play h5. Queen f3. No, I don't trust that line for black. Doesn't look right. Hmm, annoying. Maybe I'll have to revert to e5 after all. Knight b8, queen g4, I can't play f6 because he takes on e6. Hmm. 
I really, I really, really want to reroute my knight somewhere, but I'm uh, just not seeing that that's a good option. Now, I wish my rook was on e8, so if that queen to uh, g4 move, I could always play bishop f8. It's annoying, because I know he wants to play e5 and close the diagonal next move. So I feel weird about having to play a move like rook e8. But uh, queen g4 might be a legitimate threat if I if I don't address it. All right, so I'm using a little time on this one, but I think it's probably worth it. I'm now looking at knight b8, queen g4, bishop g6 again. It's like a very principled line. f5, take, take. I can even play like queen c8 there maybe. So I'm thinking he has bishop h3. Yeah, these situations are tough. Like this whole line, I'm trying to make it work, but it, it, it just looks like it's not working. So often it's tempting to like keep rehashing it, trying to force it to work. But if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You got to move on at some point. Hmm. All right. I'm just going to play that move. Again, with full knowledge that I don't really want to play that, but I think I have to free up f8. And if I get a chance on the next move, knight b8 will definitely be played. But I think he's going to play e5 or yeah something like that. But that move doesn't scare me so much, to be perfectly honest. Okay, let's just drop back. Yeah, queen c3 I wasn't really considering too closely. If I were him, I'd be all over e5. I'd be thinking about that constantly. Because if he can't play e5, this knight is going to be a bad piece. He needs to get that knight to e4. Just like I need to get my knight from b8 to c6 to d4, he needs to do the same. Okay, let's just go here. I expect him to play either bishop e4 or knight e4 now. Bishop e4 might be interesting. albeit a little slow. Knight e4 is more direct, yeah. Hmm. So he can try to bring the knight into d6, I think, is one of his main ideas. Um, knight c6, knight d6. It's annoying. So let's just take, get rid of that guy. And I'll play knight c6 on the next move. Because I think my, my knight coming into d4 is is uh, is going to provide me with counterplay. But even on time now. Please queen there. Yeah, so he's x-raying my knight and also that pawn on b7. It's a good move. So if I jump in, he takes, I take, he takes on b7. Be down a pawn without particular compensation. 
Okay, let's Check. do a simplifying operation. So he takes with the rook, I'll play rook d8 is my plan. It's pretty lame, but I can't really think about doing too much active in this position. And if he takes on d8, I can take with the knight if I want to be safe. But taking with the queen has some merit as well. Although it's kind of more passive. Or actually, they're both passive. <laughs> But uh, queen takes is actually be more active, I should say. Hmm. Let's stick with the knight. Let's keep a little more tension in the position. I'm worried he might start advancing his kingside pawns, though. Like f5, prepare f5. If f5, I might have to take it and then try to put my knight on e6, but he gets access to the d5 square. That could be trouble. I still think my position is solid, but I'm, I'm worse now. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm just worse. Bishop c3 is a good move. Maybe g6. Queen d7. Okay, I'll just go queen d7. Not sure where else to put that queen. He's played pretty well throughout the course of this game. I thought his opening play was um, maybe a little ragged at places, but clearly I didn't take advantage. Okay, what about b5? b5 looks kind of like it's lashing out a little bit. Yeah, he's just playing simple and solid chess right now. Okay, let's go g6. Put some pawns on light squares. Might as well, since he has a light square bishop. I'm kind of worried about g4, f5 still, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Solid but passive. It's, it's going to be hard to play for a win in this position. Yeah, h4, like h5 would be the normal move now. These bishops have such a cramping influence on the position. Hmm. h5 kind of exposes me. h5, g4, pawn takes g4, queen takes g4. He's threatening h5. I'd have to play bishop g7. He can play h5. I take it he takes with the queen. Maybe he's not threatening much there, though. I might have to play something like b5 soon. Just maybe. All right, well, let's do this. And if he wants to play for a win, he's got to go for g4. Well, he doesn't have to right now, but now would be a appropriate moment to play g4. Nope, he doesn't do it. I'm getting the feeling like he's probably content with a draw, but he's going to try to win in a risk-free manner. All right, I gotta play this move at some point. Otherwise, I don't see how I'm gonna get my knight in the game ever. <laughs> so now seems like a, as good a moment as any to do it. 
kind of leads me to believe maybe on move 23 I should have played um, queen takes instead. I'll take with the queen. Yeah, maybe queen takes d8 on move 23. So my pawns are a lot worse. My bishop is kind of struggling too. The only thing he has to prevent is my queen from activating itself. That's about it. He'll probably play queen d3 now, offer a queen trade. Yep. If I trade, it's kind of like a fortress. Can anyone really win that if I trade? Well, all, the only person who could win that would be him. I don't want to trade yet. Play it safe. I'll try to bring my king over now. I'll go king f8, king e8 to guard the d7 square a bit better. If he goes bishop a5, I can play queen a6. So I don't think he'll do that. So he's going to march his king somewhere. Maybe over to the, like the b2 region. This is really hard <laughs> for both of us. I mean, I can't really make any progress if he doesn't want to allow me to. Because he controls the only open file. I have no pawn breaks. F6 and, or G5 are out of the question. So. I'm just going to more or less wait now. He can play queen d2, that's about it. Like, that's the only active thing he can do. Ooh, not sure why he would go there and allow me this move. I mean, he's still totally fine. King c2 takes care of everything if he wants, but... Well, maybe now I can sneak my king over. Queen f3. Okay, well, sneak our king over. I'll bring my king over to b7. Might be more useful there than defending the f7 pawn. It's very hard for him to get at the f7 pawn, so it's not needed there. Let's go here. I expect he'll badger me with the queen trade again, queen d3. It'd be interesting at some point to maybe threaten to take on h4. Um, hmm. so he's going to reposition his bishop I so want to play queen d4 I can't do it <laughs> so he's going to put his bishop on e3 it looks like I couldn't play queen d4 because I would drop the c6 pawn with check maybe I should have played king c7 on the previous move Yeah, he's just pestering me with exchanges. I'm striving. I'm trying my best to open lines. It's really tough. There's no increment in this game either. And the truth of it is, he... He can never lose unless he, he wants to win, <laughs> if that makes sense. I saw that phrase used on uh, one of the Tata Steel broadcasts uh, by one of the players in the, in the top section. Could have been Ivan Shuk. He can never lose unless he wants to win. Once you want to try to win, then it becomes risky. Yeah, I don't really see... Just go here. I guess I'll just throw this move in. Just to maybe confuse him. A4. He's putting it on super lockdown. Queen B6 maybe. Now B3 is weak, but <laughs> what can I do about that? Nothing. I can do absolutely nothing about that. Nor can he 
Bishop a5. If ever I played bishop d8, he can get his queen into d6, maybe. Even then, I have bishop e7. Okay, if queen d2 now, maybe I'll go bishop d8. And stop him from going bishop a5. And act like I'm making some sort of progress. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race, huh? My dream would be to sneak my queen in somehow. You know, like queen b6, b4, a3, get close to his king. Close to one of these weak points, b3 or g3. It's just not going to happen, though. It's too tough. It's far too tough. What queen here now? Keeping an eye on the d6 square. <laughs> I'm really grasping at straws right now. Not a whole lot to be done. Unless I could maybe play g5 somewhere. No, it's just not not realistic. Let's go back to this move. He hasn't offered me a draw yet. And I mean he's the one who's down on time. And I think has had the advantage for much of this ending, even if it's only symbolic. So I don't really feel right like offering him a draw. Maybe he feels the same way. Because <laughs> I'm a I am or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Go here. Not because I want to do anything in particular, but... Okay, so now he's maybe trying to get his queen into a5. Uh... I guess I can always just play this move, can't I? It's kind of a weird place for the king, but what is he really going to do about it? I'm just stopping all his infiltration points. Don't want him to do anything unexpected. this over here now. It's just really weird. He's not... He's not in the mood for a draw, apparently. Mmm, progress. A5 has now been played. That's a weak pawn. I can go attack that pawn. I can play my king back up to A6 now. I'll do that. Hmm. Let's repeat once. Hmm. Check. Check. Yeah, I think I'm winning this end game now. Wow. Um, let's just get the timing right with the tempos. Yeah, this is a win. I'm going to outflank him. Yeah. All right, well, I mean, that that was a draw. Like, there's no doubt about that. It's just he didn't really play it in the most accurate way. He probably should have started playing quicker 
sooner. And um, he never offered one either. It's kind of strange. So let's have a look. So as I said, this is important. Um, in systems like the ready, if black wants to, and you're like a D5 player especially, you can play setups with D5, but where you get your light square bishop outside of the pawn chain. Because as I said, there's not a lot of direct pressure on the D5 pawn. And often when you're deciding whether you can bring this piece out, you're looking at whether they can play queen b3 in reply, because that queen b3 is the move that would attack d5 and attack b7. And as you can see here, queen b3 is not possible. So black's able to, you know, quote unquote, sneak the bishop out to f5 and continue developing kind of seamlessly. I was talking about this concept of delaying the development of this knight. I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, I think this whole c5 idea is a little, little dodgy, to be honest. Um, yeah, knight e5 is a move that makes a lot of sense here. I'm not a huge fan of the e4 move that, that Dag played. But, um, yeah, and this was, this was strange. I don't think I played this correctly, though. Maybe queen c7 now? What did I play, knight bd7? Let's just check, see what the computer says. Oh, e3. e3 is interesting. e3, allowing bishop takes b7. Okay, I don't know why it liked that move now. <laughs> no, it doesn't like it anymore. Ah, okay, so knight bd7 was played. That's fine. I'm starting to think I maybe should have played bishop g6 here. I was debating the merits of, of the bishop moves, bishop g6 or bishop h7. On g6, though, f4 comes, and I always have to be thinking about what happens if he plays f5 with tempo on my bishop. So that's why I prefer the h7 move. A position I'm very curious about, though, is um, basically this one. Yeah, this one here. I spent a solid, what, four minutes on this move? It's a lot of time. That's a lot of time I'm spending on this particular decision. Um, maybe I should have played rook fd8. That might have been more accurate, because then, like, say he plays rook fd1. Um, maybe now I can... Whoops, not queen b8. Maybe now knight b8. This looks really weird though, boxing in the rook, I don't know. But my point would be like if queen g4, the move I was worried about, I could play bishop f8 and I'm okay. But uh, now nah, on second on second glance, this looks very artificial. Let's just see what the computer says here. I mean, I think the computer's gonna say black's doing okay, but hmm, maybe not. Likes white. That's a pretty healthy advantage to white. Going down a little bit. Knight b8. Queen g4, g6, uh, uh, I would never make the move g6, no way. This move just makes me cringe. Doesn't that make you guys cringe too? Like blocking the bishop? The computer has no prejudice about doing this, but I, I don't think any strong player in their right mind would play this way. No way. I refuse to believe my position is that bad here, but I have to do something like that. I don't know, maybe I misplayed it around about here. Bishop ace, h7, f4, and queen c7 seems really normal. Maybe I should have gone for the e5 idea I was discussing, because that does block his bishop and prevents him from playing pawn to e5. Ah, but then knight b1, that's like a thematic repositioning of the knight, because when I play e5, I, um, I permanently weaken the d5 square. So if he can direct his knight into that square, he might catch me off guard and uh, may have like a permanently good outpost for that piece. So that's why the engine likes knight b1 trying to quickly bring that knight up here. Hmm. Well, it seems like I might be just like a little bit worse anyways here. Seems strange though. I just I'm still kind of surprised. So I played a lot of what I felt to be normal moves. Yeah, queen c3, it likes pretty much exactly what he did. But then again, like, the game position wasn't that bad. It was just kind of passive for me. Here it says I should not take on e4. Okay. Well, I'm going to shut the engine off for a second. So I, I, I didn't want to ignore his knight because I really thought, like, knight d6 would be a big problem um, if I were to let that knight live. Because if I take, I'm just losing after pawn takes. Right, he's attacking my queen, and he's opened up 
an avenue to threaten checkmate on g7. So maybe the computer thinks I can just like kind of um, hide with rook e7 here and hope for the best, but I don't know. I'd, I'd prefer not to think about that knight. So that's why I took and did this. And I'm, I'm just worse at this point. I mean, he's got the bishop pair. He has more space. It's a closed position, and uh, that does limit the scope of his bishop pair. But it's very likely to open up, and my miners are clearly worse than his, even though the scope of the bishop pair is somewhat limited, especially his dark square bishop. That's not a great piece. His light square bishop's really good. Um, yeah, I mean, if he really wants to win this, he should have used his kingside pawns more aggressively. Like, f5 is a move he definitely should have thought about in this position. Um, after take, even though he's giving himself an isolated pawn, maybe he can try to utilize the d5 square, some line like this, let's say. Then e6 is, and e6 and f7 are both uh, pretty vulnerable for me. And b7 too. I'll probably have to play b6 sometime. So there's that. Um, maybe even more aggressive would have been right here playing g4. I think he missed a big opportunity to play that move. Because as you saw, uh, the king side pawns remain static for the remainder of the game. Once he brought his king over to the queen side, he kind of abandoned a plan of pushing over there. He never was able to get g4 in. But g4 now, like I take it, he takes with the queen. h5 is a big threat. My king is situated in the danger zone right here. So, you know, I was looking at a line like bishop g7, h5, take, take. And maybe now, I think I was thinking about b5 now, something like that. And it looks scary for black, though. I mean, Check. I, I am getting out of mates and such, but, you know, some move like f5 just looks a little dicey. Granted, like, it looks perhaps dicey for him, too. I mean, my queen can maybe get in here if I get a chance. Or if I trade, then maybe I have access to e2. He can probably prevent all that, though. I mean, even if he has to do something like this or uh, bishop d3 or something. But um, let's just use the engine and check a couple moments around there. Like maybe starting right here, queen d7. Okay, so it doesn't mind his king move. h4 was a good move. Hmm. Maybe it thinks that black's position is solid enough. I mean, it gives a nice advantage to white after this move. So let's just follow the engine's line. H takes g4, queen takes g4, bishop g7. Um, let's say h5, since that's pretty direct. G takes h, queen takes h. Knight c6, what about b5, like I was saying? b5, suspicious, I guess. Yeah, king g3, hmm. Don't know what king g3 is all about. <laughs> Maybe saying black doesn't have a good move or something? I don't know. Yeah, but if he's going to play for a win, he needs to do something to this effect. Open up the king side. Does the position remain too close after this? He took... I think pawn takes is probably correct. Like, if I take with the queen, only he can win this endgame. Uh, well, and that was the case in the game, too, but... Um, he could maybe make life slightly miserable for me because he could prepare a pawn break at some point with b4. So I think keeping the queens on is is good. So we both had like five minutes roughly to play this end game, and you know, he didn't do anything testing. But I do think it's a draw at this point. There's just not that many ideas for him to try to win. And if he goes overboard trying to win, like trying to push, you know, on the king side now, he might let my queen in. He might weaken h4. I think the time has kind of passed him by. To, uh, to pressure my position. Yeah, and honestly, this was... I would have taken a draw at any moment had he offered. Um, up until the point where he played a5. a5 at the end. Which, I mean, is probably still a draw even after this. Even if he loses the a-pawn. But at least I was able to go and attack that pawn. Yeah, now it's not a draw. King a3 was a pretty big mistake. So he could just move his queen away, and yeah, he's still defending the pawn. I mean, the logistics of me, like, actually taking this pawn are pretty difficult. I could have, like, tried to bank the pawn earlier, you know, just take it here or something. But yeah, even, even this is just Check. equal. My, my extra pawn doesn't really play. So, okay. Yeah, and you guys saw what happened. Um, 
time scramble Check. situation, and he went into a losing pawn endgame. Now my pawn does play. And for those of you who are kind of new to pawn endings and, and learning chess, uh, this is a concept called outflanking, where you get your king um, kind of around your opponent's king, and you're able to win a pawn that that king is trying to stick by. Because you're kind of like bullying him out. Like by doing this, I'm like approaching from the side, I'm flanking him, and his king can no longer stay defending this pawn, so black wins. And there's no like tricky breakthroughs or anything. If he plays g4, I can just take. If f5, I just want to be sure to take with this pawn, so he can't get a past h pawn. <laughs> so. All right, so one thing before I wrap up here, let's just take a look at where we're at on the 15 minute list. See what we might have coming up. I don't think my rating is active yet. I still need to play a few more 15 minute games. I'm 2189, yeah, so I'd be like right here. Um, ways to go up at this list. You can see that uh, the ratings on this list are uh, much more tightly packed than like the five and the three minute list. Like the highest rate player is only 2330. You know, and that makes me think that it's it's pretty tough to get to the top of this list, and there's just not that many players, and progress can be slow. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.